So every week, Urban India produces a mound of garbage that weighs twice as much as the Empire State Building. The only processing that really goes on is done by waste pickers. Those who earn less than $2 a day, scrapping through uh, dump sites, collection centers, and neighborhoods to eke out a living. About 20 years ago, uh, the municipalities were depending almost entirely on municipal solid waste management. So a system where the municipalities then hired all of the workers that they needed to collect door to door, clean the streets, do all of the sanitation services that were required. Uh, starting about 20 years ago and now accelerating over the last two decades, there's been this system of privatization which has happened which has brought in these infrastructure companies that have a lot of capital to invest in solid waste management services. And those infrastructure companies have been hired to collect from secondary collection points, put it in a big truck, take it to uh, a dump site for, for just dumping in an open area. There's no processing happening. Uh, where the waste pickers come in then is they've basically been systematically excluded from this system because there is no door-to-door -door collection service for which they are employed. Uh, households are now uh, hiring these informal workers on a one-on-one -on -one basis to do the door-to-door -door collection, collecting the waste from their doorstep and taking it to that secondary collection point from where the infrastructure companies are carting it. So where you see waste pickers actually collecting the recyclables is at that collection point where they've been able to separate out the recyclables and cart it off to a scrap dealer or at the landfill. Born from an Indian father but raised in the US, Parag has always kept an eye on what he really felt concerned about, public services. In 2009, rich of a previous experience as a consultant and influenced by hundreds of social entrepreneurs he mixed with during a three years spent working at the Scrap Foundation, decided to launch Waste Venture. One thing I noticed was we often ran into a lot of groups that worked with waste pickers or worked in solid waste management. And many organizations had different parts of the model correct, but no one had really put everything together. So one of the first things I did was to work with two or three of the major groups that I knew around the world, uh, two or three of the major social enterprises to understand further how we could build a globally adaptable model of low-cost, decentralized, solid waste management that included waste pickers. Often, tenders are paid on the amount of waste that's dumped, which then creates a perverse incentive for less processing and more simple dumping into dump sites. What we do instead is we're able to gather the waste pickers, train them to go door to door, collect garbage, sort it into dry waste and organic waste. We recycle the dry waste, compost the organic waste, sell the compost to farmers, sell the recyclables to manufacturers as raw goods, and even earn carbon credits on top of that. The end result, our model is four times as profitable as the current paradigm. Uh, we reduce 85% of the total waste within a city, and we reduce harmful car carbon gases. In India, people don't feel concerned by the waste anymore as long as they left their home. Thus, the biggest challenge of waste venture is to make households pay for their waste to be processed, as well as turning waste segregation into reflex among Indians. And it cannot be achieved without a solid service. There are two salient aspects of our business model. The first is treating the household as a customer, as in we provide professional, timely service to households on the ground. Uh, providing them daily solid waste management collection. So garbage collection that they pay about 50 rupees per month for. Uh, our labor base is the waste picker. The waste picker comes, collects from 150 to 200 households, and we pay them based on the number of households they collect from, as well as the quantum of separated organic 
and recyclable waste that they then sell to us. No one has really quantified organic or been able to put, ascribe financial value to organic waste thus far, which is what's innovative about our model. After several pilots, West Venture's business model has now been proven. But working with West speakers and make them live the informal economy is not an easy task. If, if we don't offer an increase in their income, waste pickers aren't interested in working with us. That's the, the number one concern. We've just conducted actually here in Indore a survey of 160 waste pickers in the area uh, across eight different waste picker slums. And the number one thing was we need more money. Number two thing, we need access to credit, which is essentially we need more money now. The number three thing, access to loans. Again, we need access to cash right now. We have day-to-day -day expenses, we have children getting married, we have you know, leaks in our roof, things that need immediate attention. And then we can start worrying about access to education, access to a functioning toilet, all of those things. We make sure that we triple their income because that's what we've calculated they need in order to put their children in school. Um, at the current rate, over 40% of waste pickers in India are estimated to be children. There is no hard data on that, but if you look at some sample cities like Delhi, Bangalore, Mumbai, that's what tends to be the proportion. And those children are only working not because their parents want them to do that work, but because they need to supplement the family income and it's a relatively easy, unregulated thing for them to do. So we think if we can triple waste picker income, that then means only the mother and the father would have to be doing the work, or even just the mother, would provide enough income to take care of the family so that the children can actually attend school. Um, we specialize on the business side, but we then partner with local NGOs that are doing that type of work to empower them and enable them to provide those services in a better manner. पहले तो ऐसे मतलब हम आते जाते हैं हमको जानकारी देते थे हर बात की जाते आते थे फिर उसके बाद में ललित सर और थोड़े बहुत दिन पढ़ाने आते थे फिर हमारे पास टाइम नहीं रहता था कि हमने नहीं पढ़े पर इतना हो गया कि हम हमारा नाम लिख सकते विगत में हां रोज में खुलवाया ना 100 रुपए से खुलवाया बचत था अभी कितने रुपए आपके बैंक में अभी बचत बचत ने डाली पर डायरी खुली थी वो डाला ना 26000 रुपए 26000 और कौन सी बैंक में खाता है आपका विचोल बैंक में नाम नहीं मालूम बैंक ऑफ इंडिया हां ऑन टॉप ऑफ बेनिफिटिंग टू वेस्ट स्पीकर्स पैरागनिस टीम परशू अ मच मोर एंबिशियस गोल द चेंज वी आर ट्राइंग टू क्रिएट इज टू फंडामेंटली शिफ्ट द पैराडाइम ऑफ सॉलिड वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट एंड व्हाट आई थिंक आई रेवल इन इज वी आर एबल टू डू सो वेयर the financial profitability, which therefore sustains it, is guaranteed by envir environmentally processing the waste. So you don't realize the financial value unless you do that environmental processing, composting, recycling, earning the carbon credits. And because the waste pickers are our labor base, then they also benefit as we grow. We're able to impact more of the waste pickers and we're able to grow their benefits as well. If we thought of ourselves as just benefiting the waste pickers, then we would just forever be a niche player that wouldn't be able to grow very much in the larger context of solid waste management. As in, we would never make a dent in the entire field. So I'm much more comfortable comparing myself to other infrastructure companies or solid waste management companies than I am comparing myself to other social enterprises. We have an objective for about a 15 year period uh, is, is how we think about it. And during that 15 year period, uh, you know, the first five years or so is really honing that model, getting it to profitability, getting it to a point where we can then provide a return to our investors. The next five years is ensuring its adoption uh, by other players, making sure others are entering the field and changing it, not only in India, but then also looking uh, beyond to other developing countries. Is, this model, as I mentioned at the beginning, really has a global scale in mind. It was globally developed and it has that global scale. And by the 15th, you know, when we look at the last five years, uh, years 11 through 15, what we're really looking at is how do we change government policy also at the global level to implement this kind of a system, uh, which is much more profitable for companies, much less risk, for municipalities, much better for households, and much better for the environment.
West Venture is still a young company, and make West speakers abandon years of caste system to share West Venture vision is a long-term process. Knowing that at the end of the day, accomplishing the objectives of this organization will not only create a clean environment, but also improve the lives of these desperately poor, incredibly uh, dejected portions of society is, I mean, what else can you want to do? <laughs>